first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. All right, all right. We're back once again with Dr. Eileen L. Bay. Oh, man, I'm glad that you're listening um, tonight. Um, we're going to go into a little bit of things in which that those who are conscious have already done massive research on. However, we're just going to try to tie um, some of the knots together and probably give you a little bit more um, info as far as um, a little bit more research and study to do. Um, when we talk about the Illuminati, that actually was the name of over 200 different organizations. Um, the one in particular in which that we have a tendency in America to focus on is the infiltration of the Bavarian Illuminati that was put together May 1st, 1776, by Adam Weiss. Um, Adam Weiss was a former Jesuit priest. And um, I don't want to say too much former in that regard, but if you get the book Cosmic Trigger by Robert Anton Wilson, he speaks specifically about the fact that George Washington was killed and his replacement was Adam Weiss. And Adam Weiss is the individual in which that became um, the United States so-called first president. Of course, we know there was other presidents prior to them, um, prior to him, um, under the Articles of Confederation and also under the Articles of Association, so dating from 1774 to um, 1789. We had, of course, about maybe 16 um, different presidents, eight under the Articles of Association and eight under the Articles of, a, of a Confederation. And George Washington, of course, um, being the ninth one from out of the Article of Confederation, supposedly was stated at nine years old, um, he told his father that I will not lie, I chopped down the cherry tree. The cherry tree, of course, was the Moorish flag. Um, so... You know, when we get these stories, we know that a lot of it is reconstructed history with clues in order to bait us into research and study. Now, this is how it came into being. Um, you have several letters. You had one by George Washington, Jorge Washington, in which that actually stated that um, he did not um, coincide and he did not uh, like the fact of 
what the Illuminati was doing, that he has heard of the Illuminati, but he did not um, think that the Illuminati um, had infiltrated uh, the Masonic Lodge at that particular time period. Then there was another letter, supposed to be by the same George Washington, which that states that not only has the Illuminati infiltrated the Masonic Horsey, but no one is more happier than he. So um, these are two different um, thought processes on which that went on. And according to Robert Anton Wilson um, in Cosmic Trick, he states that, that the real George Washington was actually killed off and replaced by Adam Weiser, who was the head of the Bavarian Illuminati. And this is how they infiltrated um, here within the United States. Um, now, of course, we knew that America was a um, had a secret destiny. You can get the book, America's Secret Destiny, by Manny P. Hall. Um, you can also get his book, Secret Teachers of the Ages, in which he speaks about um, how America was actually was designated um, as a hub of information, as we would say, all right, for, uh, for, for terminology, usage, and purposes. Uh, we say a hub. Um, it was supposed to be the forefront of the world in that regard because in ancient times, the word um, America uh, which stemmed from the Incan word Amaruka, um, was actually the land of the immortals or the land of the serpent gods. Now, you can get this from the serpent, Return of the Serpent's Wisdom, written by Amaru Pinkham, Mark Amaru Pinkham. Um, he wrote the book, Return of the Serpent's of Wisdom, in which he states that the original name of America stemmed from the Inca, uh, word actually is a word in which that went back into um, ancient times and answered from an elite in um, ancient times, far back, far, far back. Um, what he stated was that specifically the um, American Vespusky, um actually his name was Alberto Vespusky, and America became his nickname based on the fact of him coming to, as we would say, America, but America was not named after him. He um, named himself or others named him America after uh, coming in contact with the um, Native people who already was calling the land America or um, um, Amaroka. All right, now... You can get this also from, from another book called Gods and Spacemen of the West by um, W. Raymond Drake, in which that he speaks uh, on that topic also about how we've been miseducated in school concerning um, history and how it's been reconstructed. All right? So, um, this is how the Illuminati or the Bavarian Illuminati specifically came into um, existence um, here in America. Um, all right, so of course we know that according to history, the Bavarian Illuminati supposedly started in um, Germany, um, Ingolstadt, um, by Adam Weiss, but they missed the port in which that he came here to America, in which that um, he posed as the top general. Um, George Washington, after he killed him, and became president of the United States. All right. Um, so say that's another discussion, you know, um, another show too. And it is because there's a lot of um, misinformation in it that is out there, which that we are trying to uh, correct and find um, the missing pieces and puzzles to. Now, um, when you look at the group from which that extended from it, like, for example, we can say um, the group specifically in which that extended from it would be, well, 
several. So, of course, we have the Bilderbergers with the Bilderberg Group, in which that came about in 1954 um, at the Hotel Bilderberg, in which that uh, Western Europeans and Americans, or let's just say United States uh, citizens, or whatever you want to call them, um, came together in order to uh, form the Bilderberg Group, in which, of course, we now know that they run um, a lot of the political and finance and labor um, of the world. And whoever goes to those meetings normally become um, heads of state, you know, so we know that they are definitely controlling things in that regard. And then, of course, you have the Trilateral Commission, which was formed by David Rockefeller in 1973, in which that was, once again, um, United States, um, Western Europe, and their interaction with Japan, you know, and um, other countries. Um, so, um, you know, that also goes into, the, you know, from the establishment of the Council of Foreign Relations, in which that was founded in 1924, in which that um, dealt with foreign policies and foreign affairs, you know. Um, once again, stemming from um, these particular individuals. Now, it's no coincidence that we're talking about the Rockefellers and we're talking about um, major uh, financiers and bankers and political heads in the world. Well, it seems that we had many, um, you know, who knew about it even back um, many, many years ago. Matter of fact, Marcus Garvey knew about the Illuminati and he um, quoted them by name. Um, he said, if the oil of Africa is good for the Rockefeller's interest, if the iron is good for the Cogni Trust, then these minerals are good for us. Why should we allow Wall Street and the capitalist groups of America and other countries to exploit our country when they refuse to give us a fair chance in the country of our adoption? Why should not Africa give the world its black Rockefeller's Rothschild? And Henry Ford, all right? So um, he knew um, the Illuminati, and this was back um, in the 1920s. So it seems that from the 1920s to um, the late to the 1980s, a lot of this information was still hidden. Somehow um, they veiled for that 60-year period um, who was winning the globe uh, in a large, to a large extent. Of course, you had, um, you know, many who came during the 1960s and 70s who, um, you know, attempted to expose that information, uh, you know. Um, let's say um, John Todd or John Collins or Lance Collins, as he called himself. Um, I first heard about him. Um, in the late 1980s, around 1988, 1989, um, we got a tape during that time period in which that he was speaking on the Illuminati, um, the witchcraft, the Satanist, the Luciferian slash rock and roll and mind control connection. And if you know anything about John Collins, uh, supposedly in 19, around 1973, he converted to Christianity. And it was from there that he was able to um, go throughout, travel throughout the country to the various churches and begin to start instructing them on the Illuminati. And the fact that he was part of the Collins family, um, that was one of the top 13 Illuminati bloodlines, bloodlines or blood clans, as I call them. And, you know, I say, I'm going to actually call them the psycho blood clan. And you will see that the Collins, according to him, was the witch covenant or Kohen priesthood for the Illuminati. So they are the ones specifically who do the rituals of protection and, and uh, 
blood sacrifices and spells and, you know, all these things, you know, due to astrology and numerology and all these things in order to see and who helped produce the symbolism, you know, and all these things. It's the Collins family. All right, now, um, even with Jack, um, the names were revealed, um, you know, by John Collins to that extent, um, as it was to another student of John Collins who was Fritz Springmeyer, all right? Um, now, before I get to Fritz, let me um, say this, um, Fritz. Let me say this about John Collins is that um, they put him in jail, and actually he's still in jail to this day um, in South Carolina in what is called um, in a insane asylum, all right? And, you know, he was exposing the plans and the plot of the Illuminati, and one of the books that he always spoke about was um, – was um and Schwartz, all right, which was supposedly a book. Um, it's also a movie now. It's been made into a movie. But um, he spoke about that and how that was actually used as part of the plan of the Illuminati. Now, of course, you know, another document, which is called the Protocols of the Lord Elder for Zion, in which that, to me, ties into Fritz Springmeier, who... Um, of course, with the name Springmeyer, you can, you know, say that he's a Jew or said Jew, but he also said he converted into Christianity, um, you know, and he came out and ex- um, exposed the Illuminati through his books, um, in particular the thirteen, um, the top thirteen bloodlines of the Illuminati, um, which was two volume books, the ones that he came out in the nineteen ninety mid nineteen nineties with. Um, Soon after, uh, they said that he was part of Robin Banks, and they put him in jail for um, nine years, you know, which that um, he was supposed to be in jail until 2012, but he just got out recently and um, this year, and he was actually on Alex Jones' show on Nightly News. Um, so I recommend you going to um, prisonplanet.com slash um, Infowars.com and checking out Fritz Springmeyer and um, Alex Jones as they speak about the psychopathic tendency of these people. And this is who we'll be dealing with a psychopath. Now, you get the book on racial um, psycho, um, psychopath um, psychology. Um, it's, um, I think it's Racial Psychiatry. Uh, it's a book written by. Um, Bobby E. Wright, I can't remember the title, full title, but he states in there that there's only three things that you can do with a psychopath. Um, one, lobotomize them, which means brain construction, reconstruction. Two, put them in prison or jail for life. Three, kill them, murder them. All right? It's the only thing you can do with a psychopath. All right? The reason why is because they have no feelings, you know, and because they have no feeling they can do anything, you know. And so these are the type of people that we're dealing with. David Icke refers to them as um, the reptilian, because actually what they're working is the reptilian portion of the brain, which is based on fight or flight. And individuals who use predominantly the reptilian portion of the brain become easy access or demonic possession from beings from the astral plane over its own level one, two, in which that, um, these beings can become attached to the first and second um, chakra within the person's body, and the individual can become perfectly possessed and actually can become a walk-in for that entity. Um, they can share that house, which that temple, that body, or either um, through a traumatic experience, that um, individual spirit can leave and that spirit take over um, the manifestation of that physical body. All right? Now, um, these are the things in which that uh, are occurring and has occurred. So when you're talking about the Illuminati, and um, you go and do your research on John um, Collins or John Todd, 
um, you know, to me, he, he became like the first one that I heard about uh, on that level, you know, that spoke about the Illuminati. And uh, that's when I was dealing with um, they have stolen a lot of numerous Islamic people up under um, uh, Imam Misa, like, you know, Imam Misa al Hati who most people know now as Dr. York or Dr. Miles York from Hill. And um, even Dr. York wrote several books about it. Um, one book in particular was called Leviathan 666, in which that was one of the major um, books in which that he exposed also the Illuminati in that regard. Right. And also these tapes of John Collins or John Todd was um floating around um you know during that time period and we just happened to, you know, get our hands on it because we just um caught up the answer to a lot of the Islamic Hebrews and we used to listen to it almost every day, you know, analyzing, you know, the structure of the Illuminati and you know, you know, checking out the mentality of these individuals and who are they, you know, what industry do they work through? Well, they work through the industry of the um, of white supremacy, specifically um, comfort, um, confrontation of white supremacy. If you get Dr. Neely Fuller's um, book, as well as also his student, um, Francis Cross Wilson's book, ISIS paper, they speak specifically on the nine battle fronts in which that we will be fighting or have to counteract these individuals at. And, of course, it's sex, labor, war, um, economics, entertainment, religion, education, um, politics, you know, health nowadays, uh, so forth and so on. There's nine fronts, all right, law. You know, so these are the fronts on which that we have to begin to come together. And there's enough organizations actually to kind of act, so-called, you know, black Moorish um, organizations actually to kind of act what is going on, you know, but for whatever reason, oh, and also one of them was also war. But for whatever reason, um, we're not coming together in order to do so. So I think that's because of the ego of the various organizations in which that um, has the tendency of wanting to project themselves to be in the number one organization instead of looking at the unification, as um, Malcolm X said, um, you know, a united front. For those that don't know, there were three chapters in his book that supposed to went in. Um, Alex Haley kept those three chapters out in which that dealt with the united front um, information in which they're supposed to have been able to um, connect, um, you know, the organization. And I think that we really need to look and find those particular three chapters and start to analyze it and actually um, try to fulfill that prophecy, you know, of um, Malcolm X, you know, in that regard. You know, uh, Brother Ola Wally um, slash, you know, um, Malcolm El Haj Malik Al Shabazz. So um, I think that's what we definitely need to be doing because, as we read earlier, um, Monk is going to be new about the Illuminati um, by name. And like I said, it seems that we didn't come back into consciousness or awareness up until the late um, 80s, you know. Um, and somewhere between gangster music and the music in which that we um, now have, which I call shit hop, uh, we have lost uh, that connection once again. You know, from the mid '90s on up to now, we have lost that connection as far as knowing uh, these individuals. Even though there's people who still, of course, do the research and study on it. Now, like I was talking about with Frick Springmeyer, who got blamed for supposedly holding up um, banks or you know robbing banks. He went to jail for nine years and just got out recently. Um, his book, Top 13 Illuminati uh, Bloodlines, he speaks specifically about the Astors, the Bundys, the Collins, the DuPont, the Lee, the Morgan, the Freeman, the Russells, the Reynolds, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Van Dyne, um, the Canoop, 
Disney and McDonald's, um, these particular families who are some of the most richest families in the world. Um, these are billion, trillion near uh, families. And, you know, matter of fact, M. Sure Rothschild, it is said that he had um, over $600 trillion in gold in his basement alone, from which that was stolen from out of Africa by via Cecil Rose, who worked for him. And, of course, Cecil Rose killed over 25 million Africans and then named Zimbabwe, um, Rhodesia, um, after himself, all right? So this is the nonsense in which that's been perpetuated. And so when we do the research and study, we have to actually look uh, real well, you know, all right? So, so we know that these um, groups, one group in particular in which that begins the Illuminati processing. And you have um, first and second chapter. You have the um, Barbada um, campus, um, which is the first chapter, academic honorary chapter of the Illuminati. Then you have the second chapter, which is Skull and Bones, all right, in which that, um, of course, comes off of Yale University. And that's the one that most of us know about is the second chapter, based on the fact that um, allegedly, uh, Hillary Clinton, Al Gore, uh, um, John Curry, and of course George Bush, his father, and his father Prescott Bush before him, um, all were and are supposedly um, members of the Skull and Bones, allegedly, um, and they're all interrelated, you know, um, through bloodline, um, as. But Spring Meyer was um, speaking about how all of the presidents um, have been part of the same bloodline. So there's something within the blood in which that um, um, shows forth this connection to this reptilian portion of the brain. Amazingly, um, I seen on the view a few months ago where President Obama was on there and he was speaking about the reason for the differences in society was based on individuals using the reptilian portion of their brain. And so he himself spoke on um, this reptilian connection, and that was amazing to me. You know, so there's a lot of clues on which that is being put out, you know, and so we definitely need to analyze it, all right? Now, these particular families, you can go to um, Rich Springmeyer's books or get online and Google of these particular um, names of these organizations. Um, you know the DuPonts. You know you know what they work with. You know, um, you know they work. You know within the industry. You know oils, petroleum um, industries such as you know uh, minerals, iron. You know steel you know, all those types of things. You know, rentals, of course, deals with tobacco, uh, aluminum, so forth and so on. Ashes deals with the furs, uh, you know, of animals and so forth and so on. Uh, you know, so it seems that each family has taken a particular um, industry to monopolize. All right? We know that the Rothschilds has taken the banking system, all right? Um, matter of fact, the Rothschilds, um, they were the financiers or the bankers for the Vatican, all right, for the papal state or for the Roman Catholic Church, all right? Uh, and this is how they um, got their money. And they are jockeying... Uh, same family, but however they're jockeying against the Rockefellers. Supposedly, um, the East is controlled by the East is controlled by the Rothschilds. The West is, is controlled by the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers, you know what they're into politics. Um, supposedly, Bill Clinton actually is the son of Winthrop Rockefeller. Um, you know, is a bastard child of him, and I shouldn't say bastard in this sense, but you know that's. That's a, that's a word that they use also. Um, the 
Rockefellers, you know, uh, also has their hand in the Monsanto, who deals with the Terminator seed, you know, deals with uh, monopolizing the herbs and the food industry, all right? Um, they're doing genetically altered foods, GMOs. Uh, they monopolize the federal, um, um, the Food and Drugs Administration, the FDA, you know, all of these things. Um, they control, help control um, the CIA, you know, in a sense, as well as also NASA, you know, um, all of these things. So there's a lot of things going on. All right. So let's look at some more things here. Now, how are they able to accomplish what they're doing? Is because there's a buffer um, between them and those at the grassroots level who knows this information. All right. Like, for example, um, W.D. Du Bois, uh, along with Alan Locke. Alan Locke was the first black Cecil Rhodes scholar. And, of course, W.B. Du Bois was the first black or Negro to graduate from Harvard. All right? They publicly defiled the garden by calling him a gorilla and a monkey any chance they got. Um, Alan Locke was even... Um, uh, was quoted as saying, we hope the white man delivers because we crushed a great black thing, but we know he'll deliver or our people will attack and plank us forevermore. Now, why would he say that? Because there was an organization in which that was formed in 1904 by Harry Minton, um, who also formed, um, helped form um, with Charles Wesley, um, Alpha by um, Alpha by Alpha, but they form what is known as um, the Boule or Sigma Pi Phi, all right? And W.B. Du Bois became the head of the New York branch chapter or was or formed the New York or founded the New York um, chapter of the Boule, Sigma Pi Phi. So here you have the Boule, um, destroying the largest organization who knew about the Illuminati at this time period and wanted to counteract the Illuminati by giving uh, Moors or blacks, their blacks, the opportunity in order to go into Africa and get the resources such as the oil, gold, diamond, and whatever else, um, uranium, um, um, plutonium, whatever else, in which that was precious, in which that could be utilized. And this is what Marcus Garvey was doing. He did not want to take every Negro back to Africa, all right, because he knew that many of us would be lazy and wouldn't do anything productive. He wanted to take those who was serious about manufacturing and, you know, transforming our destiny. If we were to follow him, we would be in a much better predicament than what we are in right now, which is still even from the scraps of the so-called set master's table, all right? And the boule um, seem as if they are very happy to just get the scraps. So they keep those who are at the grassroots level down purposely with a lot of disinformation, which that comes through via the CIA um, and different organizations in order to uh, act as a buffer against the grassroots movement and the Illuminati, you know, in other words, to keep us at bay and, you know, uh, from us knowing. But, however, in the 1990s, a great brother stepped forth by the name of Steve Coakley, um, who um, got the information on the boule, all right, and found it. Um, and found a lot of those connections that um, those who were into the Illuminati and knew about the Illuminati and how it related to the blacks, you know, the said blacks or Negroes or colored, you know, at that time. And, of course, the NAACP, the Urban League, all of these were funded by uh, 
Jews um, and the Rockefellers, you know, um, the Urban League actually was founded by John D. Rockefeller. Um, um, the United Negro College Fund was set up, I should say, by um, John D. Rockefeller. You know, all of these things, you know, um, this is what is going on. So we see the connection, and Brother Steve Coakley brought clarity during the 1990s and now. Uh, so I recommend you go and watch Brother Steve Coakley's information also. Uh, he was, I would say he's the foremost authority on the conspiracy against um, said blacks as far as from the Illuminati and the buffers or the similar powerfiles or the advisors to the kings, which that's supposedly is French. Boule is a French word, which means the advisors to the kings, the kings being, per se, the Rockefellers in the Western Hemisphere. So, uh, matter of fact, um, Henry Minton stated that he wanted to pattern the Boule on similar part five specifically after the Skull and Bones, which is the second chapter of the Illuminati. All right, so this is what they do. And, of course, you have to be a lifetime member of the NAACP as a Boulay member. Um, and you know that the, um, that the NAACP was founded by the Jews, all right, by Wise, um, by, um, um, by several um, Jews, I think, Spingard brothers, you know. Um, so um, they founded you know, the NAACP, and of course, uh, W.B. Du Bois was a member of that. Okay, so um, these shows the connections on how they were able to use. They were able to use the educational system, which they have their, um, their tentacles throughout. Remember, we spoke about the nine battle fronts, where education is one of them. So they were able to use the educational system on historically black college campuses, as well as also specifically on the Ivy League schools in which that they was recruiting. All right, and W. B. Du Bois, being the first said black graduate of Harvard, um, became, uh, you know, one of the primary uh, leaders in that. You know, now Carter G. Wilson, who was the second said black um, graduate of Harvard, um, he wrote a book called *The Miseducation of a Negro* and *The Education of a Negro*. So it's two books. But in the miseducation of a Negro, he basically states, um, and he breaks down the fact of how this miseducation. So he actually gave us the key of um, how this occurs. If you go and read his book, um, *Miseducation of a Negro*. All right, and you can just see because um, Cody G. Wilson. He wrote for Marcus Garvey. So did Jay Rogers help write for Marcus Garvey. So you see that the first uh, Harvard graduate went against Marcus Garvey, but the second Harvard graduate went with Marcus Garvey and was trying to help him, even by writing specific articles. So um, these are the things in which that we have to tie in and piece together and do some more research on. What we're going to do is um, see if we can get some questions going. If you have any questions or comments, please um, press 1. Right, if you have any questions, you're going to press one. All right, we have some technical difficulties. What we're going to do, continue building. What we want to also talk about
is the science of being able to protect yourself dealing with these psychopaths because there would be no need of us talking about the Illuminati and all of these particular things that there's, um, if we were just going to be having to be worried about it. Like I said, we found out about the Illuminati over 20 some odd years ago, you know. Um, and so what we're talking about is research and study and also learning our sciences, get back into the, our sciences. And our sciences deal with metaphysics as well as also um, the science of power of the mind. All right? Remember, we are the builders of ancient civilizations such as the Giza Plateau, the pyramids, in which that no one on the planet has been able to duplicate. All right? The United States has tried, failed. Japan has tried, failed. Germany has tried, failed. Britain has tried, failed. None of these countries, France has tried, failed. None of these countries have been able to duplicate um, our civilization, you know, um, the pyramid, in which that you're talking about 20 to 200 ton stone block cut with laser precision, not even a piece of paper or a razor blade can go in between you know, and on the Giza Plateau specifically, these pyramids are aligned um, on the center of the earth. Um, The biggest one, large one, Khufu or Cheops, you know, so, you know, we have to also look at that, you know, great thing. So you have within your genealogy, you have within, because remember, you are a, um, concentration of universal life force. And you are also um, seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side, the concentration of all their memories. All right? And it goes, of course, it goes further back than that, but we come out, um, you know, moderately. And so you have within you this potential, and um, we want to see that potential come out fully, sincerely. For those who watch my DVD, you know um, how sincere I am about getting this information out and seeing how people wake up, you know. And that's what, you know, is our concern, is our people waking up, you know. Um, Dick Gregory speak about the fact that the CIA wrote the um, book, uh, Billy Lynch, um, speech, in which I suppose it was written in 1712. Uh, however, it has relevance. You know, it speaks about a spell in which that would be put on us for 300 to 1,000 years, and that allegedly, you know, if you take 1712 and 300, it becomes the 2012, in which that um, now this spell is being broken. So it is said that uh, this is what was going on. Now, we don't and can't say who wrote it, but we just know that the terminology in the book is up to date. And I know when I first heard about the book, um, the word nigger was used um, in it and not Negro and not black, you know. So, you know, um, the book has definitely been um, translated up to date, but we don't know who did all this translation because the first time in which that majority of us have ever heard of the Willie Lynch speech was during the 1995 Million Man March speech when um, Mr. Faircon broke that information down, All right? So what we're going to do, um, there's no question, so we're going to go to our commercial break and get into some, uh, some conscious info. Matter of fact, this goes out. To those in which that uh, is the boule, and those who are like them, who's trying to keep um, those who are striving towards knowledge with an understanding, 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 um, away from our true potential and dumbing us down with the nonsense. All right, so let's get back into the topic. So we were just talking about how the boule is a Greek term in which that means advisor to the king. 
And like we said, well, who is the king? We spoke, we spoke about the Rockefellers, but there's many different names, you know, um, the king that they arise or protect or the white secret society. Remember, we said that, and we mentioned wanting the Boule to be patterned after the Skull and Bone Society. So um, the white society responsible for white supremacy. And we mean white in the sense of um, um, complexion in this sense. All right, there's a difference even in Webster Dictionary of a free white person um, and a white person. Two different distinctions get Black's Law Dictionary for position. All right, um, so the first white Greek fraternity is uh, Phi Beta Kappa. That's what we were just talking about. That's the first chapter of the Illuminati. So they protect them, they protect the Rose and Rothschilds, the society, Gun and Bones, as we said, the Masons, or those in a high degree. Um, of the um, Scottish and the um, York right, um, the Round Table Group, the New World Order, you know, the One World Government, the Cogni, Mellon, um, Rose, um, Milner, um, Kindergarten, the Rose, um, Crown, Time Crown, All Souls Group, um, Cleverdine, Sex, and numerous other wealthy family organizations. All are simply aliases and go by many names, but um, they consist of the same membership and ideology, all right? These are the same white beasts or pale beasts, you know, that have raped, murdered, and colonized our people for hundreds of years. And their children continue to genocide, um, practice genocide against, um, against our people around the globe, you know? You know, so, I mean, this is who we are talking about. Now, we know that the um, boule. Um, have their offspring, as we was talking about, on these college campuses. Their offspring are the eight college frat or fraternities and sororities. All right? Um, we have, the, um, of course, the alphas, Alpha Phi Alpha. We have Alpha Kappa Alpha, the female group, the um, sorority. We have um, the Sigmas. We have the Sigma Gamma Rose, the female group. We have um, the Kappas, all right? We have the Deltas, female group. We have the um, Omegas or Q-Dogs, and we have um, the Zetas, all right? Um, these are the eight fraternities in Sarad. And... Um, it was all formed after uh, 1904, okay? So between 1904 and 1924, in between that 20-year span, these um, groups came about approximately around that time period. This is all part of giving that buffer once again uh, to um, Boule, which is patterned after the Skull and Bone Society. Um, they have over now collectively, um, the Boulay specifically have over 5,000 members in 112 chapters throughout the United States and West Indies, making up the wealthiest group of so-called black men and women on the planet. And you would think how very little of them, or to none, none to very little of them are working in the interest of said black people, you know, but rather gets a kick actually out of um, holding the white man's penis as he pissed on the pe- on our melanated um, people, you know what I'm saying? So this is a nonsense that's being perpetuated, you know. Now, when we go into um, some more history, um, like I was saying, you can get the book, is this is, it says Boule again means the rise of the kings and is the lower house of the Greek um, parliament. Um, inside the Boule history book, written by Charles H. Wesley, a Boule member, he also wrote the history book number for the Alpha Phi Alpha, the Elf, and the Prince Hall Mason, and founded Central State University in Ohio. All right, that's who Wesley H. West, um, Charles H. Wesley is. Um, he wrote on page, I think it's 28, says, Why 
why one of his founding members, Minton, uh, who also owned the first black drugstore in the United States, wanted to create such an organization. It says Minton wanted to create an organization which would partake in the tenet based basics or root of the skull and bones at Yale. Now, you know, we know the skull and bones, you know, the brotherhood of, a.k.a. the brotherhood of death, you know, alias the second chapter of the Illuminati, incorporated for business purposes as the Russell Trust. William Russell um, established um, that in 1832 that group in 1832, all right? And it was established um, at Yale University, um, New Haven, Connecticut, all right? I remember always going to New Haven, Connecticut in order to see my uncle, and it was always such a damn eerie, dark vibe over the city. I was able to feel that energy even as a child. And it was definitely not one of the places that I would have moved to or wanted to be around. All right, so this is the nonsense in which that was going on. It goes on to say that now if, um, Henry Linton, who was said black, wanted to create a so-called black secret society based on their beliefs and customs, what type of devil is he? Well, obviously he's a black devil, which that we just finished talking about. If you look um, on page 38 of the Boulay History Book, and this is all, Steve Coakley spoke about all of this. In the building of the organization plan, reliance was placed upon Greek history and tradition. The reason of this action are not difficult to discover, for it is well known that the study of Greek civilization was basically in um, acquaintance with Western civilization. Although Greek culture has relationship with the culture of the Orient, all right? So this is what he says. And so this is the things in which that, you know, they're talking about. Now, of course, some other members of the Boule, we have um, ACG Elliott, in which they, even though he's a Boule member, I see him um, still doing something, um, you know, on behalf of the uh, said blacks in that regard. Um, he wrote, he formed ASCAT in which that was a think tank of um, Egyptology or Kemetology, um, and a lot of books was released during the time period of the um, 1980s, um, due and based on ASCAT, you know. So that was still a great thing. And he wasn't he was taking things back to Egypt, unlike um, Henry Minton, who was just talking about he was going to follow the Greek traditions and customs, um, in which that supposedly formed and shaped Western civilization. Um, but even though A.C. G. Elliott was a Boulay member, uh, you know, I give him props in that regard. Um, Hank Aaron was also a member of the Boulay, or is a member of the Boulay. All right? Uh, there's, there's been many, many. Uh, Vernon Jordan, you know, who was uh, President Clinton's uh, right hand or main man, you know, Boulay member. All right. Um, so there's been many who have come. And there's always the ones in which that's been, you know, Ron Brown was a um Boule member. So when he went against Clinton and was getting ready to expose um uh, the Whitewater scandal and um, uh, you know, and the selling of secrets to China, you know, for missiles and so forth and so on, uh, he was found dead with a 45 bullet hole in his head um, from a crashed airplane. All right, I wish that you can get Dick Gregory speaks on that. Um, Martin Luther King was a Boulay member, but when he went against the establishment, look what happened. Um, he also was assassinated the day right before he was assassinated. He gave the clue that that he had reached the mountain top. He might not be there in order to see it and get there with you, brothers and sisters. But you know, at least he's seen the mountain top. So. Um, that was symbolic to the pyramid of the eye. In other words, he was able to see the veil um, that was lifted, you know. And plus, if you notice, during the last three years of Martin Luther King's life, um, 
he was uh, moving towards, you know, the so-called black power um, struggle, you know, thanks to the help of Kwame Ture, formerly Stokely Carmichael, who was at the SDLC, um, you know, um, and all of this. So um, you read, where do we go from here? By Martin Luther King, the whole different Martin Luther King than um, the Martin Luther King on which that we've been adapt, um, adapted to uh, from the 1963 speech of I Have a Dream, uh, which, of course, is American, uh, US, um, the U.S. nightmare. Okay? Um, you know, so he ends up getting assassinated. All right? Um, George D. James. I can't say he was a bully member, but he was a Mason. And uh, so was Martin Luther King a Mason. And so was also, uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, he was an Alpha. But uh, George D. James, he was a Mason. And he got his throat for writing the book Stone and Legacy soon after. He got his throat cut in a Masonic style from, from um, ear to ear and his tongue taken out. All right? So when you go against, these groups in which they have these oaths saying you have to be initiated into and so forth and so on um, in this regard, if their um, tenants are not um, towards the helping and the elevation and upliftment of for the humanity, in particular um, of the melanite, the melanin beings, then these are groups and organizations that you should not join, that you definitely should not be part of, all right, because this is about the upliftment of our people. And we can't do that, um, you know, telling lies to the people. I remember um, we went to the First Baptist Church in Beverly, North Carolina, and um, Reverend Johnson, we, um, um, brother and I gave him a tape on Ashwell Crazy and Dr. Ben and John Henry Clark and so forth and so on. And, you know, he uh, supposedly watched it and knew about it, and, and we came back to pick up the tape and then find out what his um, thoughts were about it and because he was trying to actually give a lecture at his church. But this is what he said. He said he had to be concerned about his flock because if Jonah, um, if the Bible says that Jonah got swallowed up by a well, then he's going to teach them that Jonah got swallowed up by a well. Because if he would tell them the truth, you know, he would have no flock. He would have no people in his church. So he said he would stick to the lie, basically. As a matter of fact, he said he knew about Ashwell Crazy, John Henry Clark. You know, he knew about all of them. Ash, um, um, Dr. Ben Yachne. However, um, the Bible says that this happened historically and literally. And so that's how he was going to teach it, historically and literally. Even though he knew it was more um, science to it than what was involved in it. It was more metaphysics and spiritual um, holiday in which I was involved in it than what was being perceived. And I, would, and I say this because, if you notice, when I was talking earlier about John um, Collins or John Todd and Fritz Springmeier and others, they always have the tendency of leaving the Illuminati or putting out Illuminati information and exposing them, but then going into Christianity, you know, thinking that white Jesus is going to save them. You know, when they both end up, you know, in particular, uh, Fritz Springmeier as well as also John Collins, John Todd, both ended up in that same asylum in prison. So, yeah, thinking that white Jesus was going to save them, you know, coming out, that the blood of the lamb, you know, the blood of the white lamb is going to save them. This is the thing which that you would see, is that even when they expose the Illuminati, they try to seek refuge in Christianity, which was formed by the Illuminati. All right, Arias Paisos, who was a Romanocratic, or who was part of the Romanocratic family, who was also part of the Herod, the Jews, who was also part of the Ptolemies from out of um, Egypt, uh, which is how this bloodline um, supposedly got started from the Persians and Greeks taking over Egypt in the last days. I think it was after Dynasty 25, um, dynastic period, um, these invaders from Greeks and Persia came in, thanks to um, Alexander, or what, thanks to Philip of Macedonia, um, a Persian, and his son, Alexander the so-called Great, and 
with Ptolemy. Um, they came in and they set up shop in Egypt. And I think it was from um, Dynasty 25 to Dynasty 28, in which that we have this lineage or connection. According to Walter Williams, Historic Origin of Christianity, um, three degrees of the nine degree system was given to the European, in which that becomes the later on three degrees of Freemasonry into a princess, fellow craftsman, and master mason, in which that um, supposedly Sylvester is the one who sold this out. Hence, he was the first Boulay member in ancient times. <laughs> okay? And supposedly he sold this out, and Ptolemy um, came in. Um, Ptolemy the Sultan um, came in and became um, part of the. He was initiated to the mystery school, and supposedly Sylvester became the first um, pope, a Coptic pope. All right? So this is in exchange for him selling out in and him getting three degrees of that information. Luckily, we didn't get the whole thing. Um, however, there's groups now in which that claim to have the whole nine-degree system. One in particular is called Amart or the Rosicrucians, in which that claim that um, you can go through the whole nine-degree system through them. Um, you know, it would be interesting. You know, for those who do the research and study, I would say check it out and see what's going on. All right, because these are this is our information. You can't be scared of your, can't be scared of yourself. You know, I mean, of course, if you think you know something is coming to save you, whether it's a white man, you know, looking like Jesus, or whether um, it's a UFO and you have green marshes or aliens or gray, or whatever the case is, and you thinking that something is coming to save you, um, is that same mentality of you thinking that somebody else is going to wipe your ass for you, and that is not the case. You must wipe your own ass. You must get the shit out of you yourself. You must become shitless, okay? Um, that's as plain as it is, all right? Um, and that's how you become um, white as snow or clean um, by the blood of the lamb. <laughs> that's what you want to say, okay? Okay. Um, However, if you're thinking otherwise, then um, going forward for the okie doke. And according to Behold the Pale Horse by William Cooper or Bill Cooper, um, he states that they are definitely planning on faking um, a UFO invasion or alien invasion. And you can see that that's what's going on on the History Channel. They have ancient history, um, ancient alien history and all this other stuff every day, damn near. Or so on the Sci-Fi Channel, UFOs. Um, you know, everything, UFOs now on these particular channels, A&E, History Channel, Sci-Fi, you know, National Geographic. A lot of UFO information coming out, but that was the ploy um, that was said that would be the last thing before the establishment of the New World Order. So before the economy folds, they will try to fake a UFO um, invasion as part of that, because they will have to have a major distraction um, in order for the people who won't riot and won't go crazy, in which that they are already seeing um, the potential of that occurring already with occupying Wall Street, in which that is taking place in over 22 cities around um, the country, in which that you actually have, sure, there's near more and more than 22, but um, you have. Um, individuals, white, black, brown, yellow, and red, all over. If that's what you want to say, you want to call yourself um, I'm a crayon color, um, people of color, you know, or whatever the case is, uh, who are band together, come forth and band together in order to um, state that what is taking place with the economy is not right. All right, of course, a lot of them are just there to style and profile and don't know nothing about the real um, cause or why they are there. You know, um, however, there are some who do know that the Federal Reserve Bank, you know, which is part of this, um, which was formed by eight to 12 families, same families in which they made mention of um, Jewish connection um, to the Rockefellers, that the Warburgs, the Cohen, uh, the Lehman Brothers, so forth and so on. Uh, you know, the financiers, 
uh, for the Rockefeller. So all of them uh, formed this Federal Reserve Bank to become the central banking system, along with the IMF and the World Bank, to um, eventually form that one banking system that people want. All right? These are all the things in which they're working towards as part of this one world government and new world order. All right? So let's see what else we can get into. All right, this is something that Brother Steve Coakley said. He said, when we look at the boule closely, we find a confusion of value. Black men who felt that their advancement was edged upon a positive relationship with wealthy and influential white people. And I say that they may have an adverse impact on our revolution. Therefore, we gave them the boule today, the official warning. Our goal is not to kill off the boule, but to warn them as an organization, to warn the individuals that if they bring false value or worship a false um, idol into the community at a time, the community attempts to self-determinate, um, liberate ourselves, if we gave the call, they will come and grab you, and we will have every one of your address and phone numbers, and we can't get you if you choose to, but we only choose to ask you to step aside and the day we get to get master, you find some way to be on vacation. Kill off the boule would be like eating the peel of a banana and ignoring the actual banana, all right? Um, in other words, in order to stop the puppet, you must stop the puppeteer. Um, that's basically what um, Steve Coffey was saying. Um, so we have to look at this. Uh, this um, Steve Coakley recently um, had three heart attacks, and um, he's recovering now in Los Angeles. And uh, for those who can uh, get his phone number, um, you know, please call him. Wish him, you know, great health. You know, send your prayers, uh, send finances to the brother. You know, whatever you need to do in order to support one of our um, um, greatest um, contributors, you know, to uh, our piecing of the puzzle. Also, Dr. Ben recently went into um, the eyes pedal. All right, send him um, some positive energy or prayers, or affirmations, decree, uh, Reiki, praying to kill and chi, or uh, chi gone, you know what I'm saying, cultivating energy. Um, send whatever you can to him also, as well as also finances, because he was being um, um, he was in the hospital because he was being um, malnutrition, all right? He, he wasn't eating properly, all right? Don't have the finances that is needed. Our great scholars should not be um, in nursing homes and should not, um, and should um, still be provided for. They should be provided for. They shouldn't be, um, you know, um, on the on brink of death. You know, because of, um, they're not eating or or they're not being cared for, or provided for. You know, we need to be definitely doing more um, in order to make sure that our, um, you know, uh, great scholars are being you know, taken care of. You know, so please try to find um, information on Dr. Ben and get in contact with you. Need to get in contact with you in order to call. Um, around in order to um, get the information which that he needed in order to help provide um, a service for him as he did for you. Um, if you've ever read any of Dr. Ben Yakinen's book, then you know that um, he woke up from a lot of um, things, you know, a lot of questions that you had. He, he uh, pieced the puzzle together, all right? So make sure that you do that. All right. Now, Let's get back into the boule and um, those connections of the Illuminati and so forth and so on. Um, we're talking about um, we don't went over all the information on the boule that I care to go over. Um, I mean, we've been inundated with that information. Um, but um, we definitely want to go and check out um, uh, my homeboy, uh, Bobby Hemmy. You know, um, Bobby um, in 1994-95. Um, we was in front of the steps at uh, um, Atlanta 
Fulton County Library, and he was saying that if there was more people who was doing what he was doing, you know, it would make it a whole lot easier. And so it was at that point that I said, okay, I'll do it. So that's when I started putting together um, videotapes and teaching classes. It was on that time period. Now, now, Bobby did a tape called uh, The Gay Boule, or out Inside the Gay Boule, in which that um, you see several parts. Um, you can go to YouTube or whatever the case is, or you can order the DVDs from us from www.cultural-freedom.com in which that we have um, a lot of this information and plus thousands of more DVDs. We have probably one of the largest um, tape collections or DVD collections in the world, um, over 3,500 um, DVDs and tapes. All right, so um, for those that want information and need it, I advise you to go to our website, www.cultural, C-U-L-T-U-R-A-L, dash freedom, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, dot com. So www.cultural-freedom.com. But Bobby Henderson says in Inside the Gay Boule um, that they practice these same gay rituals also, in which that is within the Skull and Bones organization. All right, if you get um, um, if you get um, Anthony Hillick's um, information, who's been teaching this information on the Illuminati since the 1960s, uh, he breaks down... Um, the gay practices within the skull and bones, how they have to get in a coffin, um, butt naked, and masturbate. And as they masturbate, they have to tell all the um, deeper secrets of their sexual exploits. Um, and then once they get out, um, they have to wrestle in mud. And um, whoever get pinned, um, and I do mean literally pinned because whoever actually when the wrestling mate must let them penetrate them and enter them sexually, and that becomes your soulmate for life, all right? Um, this, is how they, this is how it goes within the gay boule in that, well, in the skull and bones. And remember, the gay boule, and we mentioned saying he wanted to set up after that. Well, um, Brother Bobby Emmett breaks down the fact of a lot of the gay rituals and tendencies and things in which that is within the gay boule. Um, it stems from skull and bones and is being practiced now, um, um, such as by Quincy Jones, uh, Russell Simmons, who's also um, Boulé, uh, Sean um, P. Diddy or Puffy Cone. You know, um, you get uh, any videotape by Professor Griff. Um, he breaks down the blood sacrifices within the music industry and entertainment world, and he shows those particular connections. All right. Um, also, my man, Anton Lawrence, uh, he um, goes in on his um, various um, productions, you know, in which he breaks down a lot of, you know, the blood sacrifices, and, you know, this is where a lot of the Expos DVDs come out at you know, such as um, Tupac breaking the oath on which that he spoke on Quincy Jones, who Quincy Jones came to him and asked Tupac in the uh, mid-'90s to fuck him in his ass. And Tupac told him, I don't get down like that, you know, because Tupac actually was going with his daughter, uh, Quincy Jones' daughter, you know. So Tupac comes out, and he actually mentions the fact that Quincy Jones um, asked him that and so forth. So, and then he also exposed it on Dr. Dre. He said Dr. Dre is upstairs sucking on dick and licking pussy, and he don't know, you know, he don't know what he's doing, you know, what he want to do, you know. So he said all of this also, you know. So there's a lot of stuff which has been exposed, you know. Of course, um, with Puffy, you see him dance with this Arab dude, you know, um, all close and personal at a gay club. Exhibit was there, and Exhibit said, well, I got to go. And, um, you know, and well is also um, Stephanie um, Crane, um, um, Superhead. She was there, you know, and she actually speaks about it in her first book, you know, about uh, the gay club, you know, Puffy, that, you know, that her and exhibit another scene on um, Puffy at this club, you know, um, dancing all close to personal. And, of course, Professor Griff shows the pictures, you know, um, you know, so... There's a lot of things going on. And then, of course, you got 
um, Lil Wayne, and of course um, Birdman doing their infamous, you know, their uh, famous kissing scene, you know. And so there's a lot of, you know, gay things going on. And of course, this is to the benefit of the Illuminati because of their control agenda, of their population control agenda. Um, their thing is to get um, down to five um, hundred million. All right, 500 million uh, people on the planet Earth and killed off um, 6 point um, some odd billion people on the planet. All right, this is, um, you know, um, down um, off of Georgia and near the islands in Georgia is a um, place in which that they actually have um, up in which that um, speaks on these types of things, how they want to um, have population control. So these are the things in which that is um in which that they're working toward. All right. Um the eugenics program in which that deals with sterilization, birthing methods, such as um birth control, pills, shots, patches, et cetera, is all part of that same um system. Right. Um, matter of fact, uh, scientifically, of course, um, we know that they have gone into the food now, in which that you see um, the European females having shapes now because of the changing of the oil in the food. Of course, the oil, primary oil now that's being used is the soybean oil, and of course, oil turns into fat, and of course, fat goes into the area on the woman's body to the hips, thighs, buttocks, and the breast area. And so now we are seeing a major increase of white women having shapes, um, even better than the sisters, because the sisters, um, based on the foods and what they are taking, are becoming obese and fat. And this is done purposely because um, a Shriner um, walked up to one of the Moors brothers, um, and I think it was in Winston-Salem in North Carolina, and he seen him with his um, Moorish um, T-shirt on, and he asked him, well, you, are you a Moor? He said, yes, sir. He said, well, do you mind if I sit down next to you? So this guy was like in his mid-70s, and he said, look, we're not going to survive unless we mix in with you all. So this is the key now. So they have to make um, them look appealing, all right, in that sense, but also um, control, um, have um, the population controlled because we outnumber them 18 to 1 on the planet, all right? There's over 2.5 billion Africans, African-Americans and of African descent um, on the planet, all right? We're the largest. And then, of course, comes the Chinese and then the Indians. And if you actually want to add the Indians into our into ours, then it actually comes over 3 point some odd billion people just by us alone. So we're more than half of um, the population of the planet by ourselves, you know. Um, it actually goes as high as $4 billion. So when they talk about destroying the people of color, this takes me back to an article that I read back in the New Amsterdam newspaper in New York back in 1987. And the article said that um, President um, Jimmy Carter signed into the Global, um, Global Report 2000 that 2.7 billion non-white people must be eliminated from the face of the planet preferably by famine, disease, drugs, and war. And this becomes part of their agenda. All right? And these are the type of the things in which that we have to battle against. So in the last few minutes, let's come up with plans to devise against it. Number one, education. Learn about the science of homeschooling and begin to get the curriculum in which that is being distributed, a school program that is being distributed by Marcus Klein, all right, who's the um, editor and uh, founder and writer for the Frontline Magazine. I used to write for the Frontline Magazine in the early to, to, um, 2000 to the mid 2000s, all right, and I recommend his program. He has one of the best programs as far as um, elevating 
demise of the youth, and you need that type of education. Everything that I'm talking about is information on which that you can read, actually in Frontline Magazine and in the back issues, all right, in which that he exposed a lot of this this information um, over 10 years ago through the Frontline Magazine. It is definitely a magazine in which that you will want, all right? So Brother Marcus Klein, K-L-I-N-E, make sure you support the brother and make sure you get that information of the Frontline Magazine um, from him. Um, his curriculum is the most excellent excellent that I have found in which that can do battle against the education program of the society. Or should I say programming of the Illuminati. All right. Um then of course law. Um the best um students of law that I've come across are the Moors. That's how I got into um, a lot of this more history was first finding out historically about our ancient land connections here in the Western Hemisphere um, through via the Empress in the early 1990s, um, you know, via Bobby Hemet, um, via Henry DiBernardo and others who also told the same information, um, Hakeem um, H.Y. Bay, and then, of course, later on, um, the elder Taj Tyreek Bay in which that um, goes into from not just the historical, educational, um, science, but also into the law aspects, all right? Um, learn the science of law, common law, constitutional law, and morality law, which is maritime, as well as also um, equity law. Learn all of these type, um, particular laws, even if you need to colorable law, which deals with statute codes, rules, regulations, and ordinances and policies. Those things become necessary also, so that if they try to hem you up, you will be able to uh, find loopholes. There's always loopholes in everything in which that they do. You just have to find them. So when it comes to um, law, um, get with the Moors because they are the most adept at it. I'm not talking about um, just the Moors Science Temple of America in which that um, they are now um, waking up. And, of course, they call me a subversive Moor, whatever the fuck that means. You know, like I'm leading people somewhere. I'm teaching information. And if you can't defeat it, then shut the fuck up. Just that simple. All right? And this is going for all the naysayers or anyone else who has something to say about what I'm doing. If you was doing something, then you would have to be talking about me. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? I'm not talking about you. All right? You know, I'm not coming out writing anything on you or saying anything about you. But um, for those who feel like they have to say something about me, then that's what it goes towards. All right? Now, when we look at politics, politics is real easy in the sense that um, we just drop major politic information on you. You know, you don't even have to participate because, number one, we talking about the voting. You know, we talking about you having to sign up for selective services. All right, and which that also give you the best in order to go into the military at the age of 18. Um, but also, you have that right in order to vote at that same time period. So um, they use that information. Also, that's the maturity of your bond. Your birth certificate also is at the age of 18, and which that, um, you know, now it can be sold to the various companies or corporations or, you know, around the world whether it's in China or Japan or wherever the case may be, and because uh, your bond now has matured to hundreds of millions of dollars. All right, so um, politics, um, you don't have to necessarily indulge yourself into. All right, politics is something which that you should keep at the grassroots level, um, you know, in that regard. We, um, you can control it better. Because when it gets to a um, state, you know, um, state level, you know, outside of the county level, you know, or city level, when it gets to a state level, uh, there's a lot of corruption and even more corruption at the federal level, you know, and control, you know. So uh, if you want to get your know, indulge in politics, um, we suggest that you do so from that angle. Um, otherwise, get the information out at the grassroots level as far as real politics. Which that is dealing with 
um, at morality law, you know, and um, dealing with how to find the loopholes um, to be a law and politics because there's an intimate connection between law and politics. All right, you can't have actually one without the other because we're dealing in a society in which that um, has committed commercial fraud, you know, and there's no full disclosure uh, for the fraud in which that's been committed. So now that we're finding out um, how deep the rabbit hole goes, it is our obligation and our duty to um, get this information out and distribute it out as quickly as possible, whether it's through the uh, various media forms, Internet, books, pamphlets, magazines, papers, or whatever the case is, getting it out, lecturing, DVDs, we need to get it out. All right. War. War deals with the fact of being drafted for the uh, military in which that they have um, up martial laws being um, inserted and being put into effect. Um, well, real simple. Um, the Nation of Islam, the New Black Panther Party, and others, uh, the More Science Temple with their motif or force or sharifs, all of them are basically security forces. We need to bring all of these forces together as in a unified front in order to make our own military because there will come a time possibly that the concentration camps might be used, but there's also those guillotines, which they have thousands of around the country. And they have thousands of um, concentration camps, detention centers, also known as um, debt camps, all right? Uh, around the country, you know. Um, they also found in Georgia thousands, I think it was over 20 to 70,000, so we'll say about 50,000 um, coffins, all right, um, that they found. So they prepared for something that we need to prepare to, all right. Um, let's get to the health because even though health isn't part of the nine battle fronts, it's definitely on one of the important things, all right, being that your body is 75% water, the water that you need is alkaline water to keep your energy levels, your electrical levels up, all right. The more electricity you have, the more output of electrical magnetic um, electro, um, energy or electromagnetic energy that you can put out um, means the more powerful you are. So you need alkaline in your body because your body is 75% water, your brain is 90% water, your spinal column is 85% water, your blood is 90% water. So you need definitely to have alkaline water in your system. Very important, very necessary. Um, foods, um, I would eat them at minimum based on the fact of genetic modified organisms or GMOs or genetically altered um, organisms in which that deals with um, altering your genes, all right? Uh, you want to find something which that kind of act that. To me, um, land herbs are good, but the best herbs are the sea herbs because they're in the water, which, once again, your body is 75% water. So the herbs in the water works the best in the body. Then comes the land herbs, which your body, your physical body is 25% um, apparent solid or earth, and the land herbs correlate to, the, to, to that 25%. So I would make the... Um, the major thing of my eat supply uh, would be the sea vegetables such as kelp, this, corella, spirulina, bladder rack, sea moss, and etc. All right? Um, these are the things that you need to take on a daily basis in order to keep your endocrine gland um, at its optimum levels. All right? and to keep disease and sickness and illness away from you, all right? Um, of course, learn the science of fasting, because you might have to fast um, for extended periods of time, not having access to grocery stores and so forth and so on, all right? Because they'd be up under military control, under martial law society. Read the executive orders, the um, presidential executive orders, and you'll see what we're talking about. Read um, FEMA orders. Read um, King Alfred Plan, Rex 84. All right? Read um, Behold a Pale Horse, which has all of these particular uh, documents in it. All right? Um, 
sex is one of them. Battlefront. Learn the science of Tantra Kriya Yoga. Kundalini Yoga. All right? In other words, learn from the real science of sex. Get away from the B sex, you know, and just trying to please or please your lower nature. Learn the science of how to tap into the higher nature by utilizing the lower nature, merging the lower nature into the higher nature or the lower self into the higher self. And it comes through the sexual act. And Tantra Kriya Yoga and Tao Sexology, um, in Tao Sexology, you can um, pull up your perineum, do the de-exercise, or can't go exercise, pull up your perineum and anal muscles, and stop the flow of semen um, or the ejaculation um, and actually cause the ejaculation to raise up through the spinal column to the brain area. Um, and actually, in Tantra Kriya Yoga, you can do what's called the microcosmic orbit or macrocosmic orbit. And we said you can use that energy to rejuvenate and revitalize and re-energize yourself or regenerate yourself. All right, so um, that would be the battle against sex in that regard. And also get away from sexism, man greater than woman, woman greater than man. No, we are, all right? Yes, women were here uh, prior to uh, the male species, however, we existed still within you, within the potentiality of you. So we came the same time you came. And men get away from that biblical nonsense of Adam and Eve, that Eve came from the rib of Adam, all right? The rib in which they did talk about Adam is actually a carbon atom, which was created um, as the sixth element. Here's the reason why Adam was made on the sixth day. The rib actually is talking about when a atom becomes a molecule. What is DNA? DNA is a molecule, and it's called deoxyribonucleic acid or ribonucleic acid. Hence the rib. That's the rib that he's talking about that came from the atom. It's talking about the molecule, the atom and the molecule. The molecule came from the atom. Well, the atom is, um, um, when it builds up, it becomes a molecule. That's what it's talking about. Not in the sexist term of being male chauvinistic, which that you become accustomed to based on this picture of the society. Let's get away from that nonsense, all right? Um, entertainment. Because we were talking about the entertainment aspect, of, uh, and which has been broken down to it. When you get into the entertainment field, know how far you need to go. Always protect your signature. All right, put UCC 1-103.6 or UCC 1-308 and protect your signature. All rights reserved, without prejudice. So when you sign these contracts, um, you can do a UCC one financial statement and an affidavit claim of lien and claim your personal um, property, your intellectual property, your in, um, um, your um, creative designs, your name. All these things are your property, and you have to claim it and lien it so that no one else can lean you, hence to sue you. So there's a science to business and economics which that you have not been exposed to. But when you get into um, the studying of law, all of this comes apparent to you when you start studying on how to operate in commerce. And commerce means intercourse, importing, trade, export. All right? Um, religion is one. Well, we know about the science of religion. Uh, uh, we talked about that with white Jesus, and many of us still are by the droves. Uh, there's two billion people on the planet that still believe in this type of thing. Uh, whether uh, it's within Christianity, Islam, Judaism, or any other religion in which they have you wait for someone to save you, and you don't have the capability of saving yourself, and you see yourself as being separate from God. This is what a Christian told me just a few weeks ago is that um, God is separate from his creation, that God and man can't be one. And this is the, this is the foolish, this is foolish, this is foolishry. This is technology at its best. When the Bible, when I asked to go get the Bible, when the brother brought me the Bible, he wanted to get up and leave. 
because he knew there's verses in the Bible that shows and proves that man and God are one. When you say our father, it shows that Jesus was supposed to be the son of God and actually becomes God, and he's saying our father, while in the flesh, he was um, connecting his disciples and those who were there into the science of saying um, that God is our father and we are the children of God. Well, he tells you in Luke seventeen twenty one that do you not know that the kingdom of God is within you or the kingdom of heaven is within you? Do you not also know by what, First Corinthians three sixteen? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the living God? I mean, so there are so many passages in which that proves that man and God are one. You know, this is why at 14, I got into the nation of God's nurse because, or the father's sentence because it made sense. And that was um, when I got exposed from 12 years old. I, I was reading the biography of Malcolm X, and that's what woke me up. Thanks to my godmother's um, mom, my god sister mom, my teacher, she woke me up. She, she kept telling me for months, yeah, you need to study about Malcolm X. And I was like, who the hell is Malcolm X? She said, no, you need to go and study. So I was living in Harlem at the time. And so I went down to the Schoenberg on Marbury, and I got the autobiography of Malcolm X and read it and read it and read it and read it over and over again. It became my, um, you know, it became my, uh, my ultimate book. And then I got into um, Hindu Kim and Kush, where they never told you in history class, um, back to the Yakinen books, John Henry, uh, um, Ashwa Crazy, and different others in the um, mid-'80s, late 80s. You know, so when we get into religion, um, I recommend studying Ashwa Kwesi's information. Um, myself, um, Brother Bobby Hammett, Phil Valentine, um, Jordan Maxwell. You know, the problem with Jordan Maxwell, as with John Collins and Fritz Springmeier, um, they put a Christian twist on things, and they won't take things back to Egypt, I should say. They won't take things back. And this is the problem that I have with them because they know that all religions come from out of Egypt, whether it's Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Taoism, or Shintoism, or Zoroasterism. Um, you know, all the religions in the world come from out of Egypt. And I can show you um, a particular deity from which that um, formed or was formed from each one. And the deity is not... I'm not talking about a living, actual person in that sense. I'm talking about an actual concept. Like, for example, um, Kares and me become the word Christianity, all right? And Kares is, means um, anointed in ancient committee, terminology as it does within uh, Greek and Latin. And, um, you know, and within Hebrew, it's Mashiach or Messiah. All right, in his transliteration. And it was called Kares Mis. Kares Mis become Christmas, in which that is practiced during December 25th. You know, so all of these things we have to go back and analyze. Islam um, comes from Sardem, which is um, the name um, in which they're happy, who's the river now deity. His name is Muhat Mat. And Muhat Mat became the word Muhammad, who brought Sardem, which is Salam. Um, or Islam to the people, you know. So I was talking about the river now deity or the river now in which they're putting um, um, during the inundation process of during um, June, um, I think it's June 23rd when um, the star Sirius comes up two minutes um, over um, the horizon before the sun. Um, it goes through the inundation process in which that um, supposedly that's when the river turns, the Nile River turns red. Uh, which, of course, I mentioned in the Old Testament is supposedly um, as a, one of the seven plagues of Moses. But it happens every inundation period um, annually. Um, and the Nile, I wish that um, the Nile um, um, floods and it brings forth growth and life. So that's what Salam or Islam was actually, or Salam was actually symbolic to, was bringing peace to the land, you know, but when you go back and analyze these religions and you break them down, a lot of people don't understand. So I recommend getting Gerald Massey's lectures, Gerald Massey um, 
books such as the Book of Beginnings, Natural Genesis, and Ancient Egypt, the Light of the World. All right? Also get the four Gospels esoterically interpreted by John P. Scott. Get Metaphysical Bible Dictionary by Charles Fillmore. And this will help bring clarity to a lot of the religious questions and kind of act the nonsense of waiting on something or someone to come and save you. All right? Um, so these are the um, things that we need to do to kind of act what is going on. You know, as far as, in, you know, labor, economics, basically that's all part of law, and that goes back to what I was just talking about. Um, businesses, uh, how to protect your business, your properties, your intellectual property, your personal property, all of those things become necessary. And those who um, join in with you, such as within labor, um, you want to also protect them too, all right? So this becomes um, common sense after a while. And how we can actually win these things is by us doing more of the things that I've made mention of and us awakening others to doing it. And the more of us who get into this on um, real science, which this is what we actually are moving towards um, based on these solar flares and these massive um, massive um, corona ejections and which has taken place on the sun right now, in which that is um, bringing forth energy strongly within the last 100 years, normally between 11 and 22 years, um, it is the sun cycle of solar flare activity or sun spot activity. However, um, every 100 years or so, it increases. Um, the energies, and this is why even now during um, almost December, um, it's still 75 degrees or more on the West Coast. Um, the Eagles, this was playing the, um, the other night, in, you know, in 65 to 70 degree weather, you know, in Philadelphia. You know, so, I mean, these are the things which that is taking place. You just have to become aware of it. All right? Um, so these... Um, all the solutions, I came with the solutions, I told you the problems, where they stem from, and how we can battle against it. When we talk about economics, we can still do things in which that uh, that Marcus Garvey spoke about almost 90 years ago. We can still go into Africa, still get diamond and gold. All right? Still can all right, I suggest that you store silver and gold, all right? Going into 2013, gold is said to go up to $8,000 an ounce. Silver, $400 an ounce, all right? Um, the guy who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he spoke about the fact that um, right now um, for people to survive this economic collapse, it would be wise if they purchase silver. And I agree. In other words, something of substance, because right now we know that the fiat note of FRNs is not backed by silver and gold. The um, gold standard ended in 1933 with the House Joint Resolution Act of 192 and ended in 1972, thanks to Richard Nixon with the silver um, standard. So we, um, the money are not backed by anything of worth um, of substance. Um, no more than the two cents in which that was printed. So whether it's a dollar bill, five dollar bill, twenty dollar bill, fifty dollar bill, hundred dollar bill, it costs two cents to make all of them, and that is some serious inflation. All right, this is why now China is the largest holder of these notes, of these debt notes, IOUs. All right, and if they come searching and come coming to collect, what are you going to do? Would you have to work it off in a debt camp? What are you going to do? They say now China is posted up at the uh, Mexican border. What are you going to do? Will you have um, anything to show that you are protected? Do you have anything in order to show um, that you um, uh, that you are the superior lien holder, that you have something of substance, gold and silver, food, clothing and water, shelter? These are things of substance. Travel, such as um, automobiles, um, besides automobiles, do you have horses? 
Do you have um, food such as goat, um, possibly cattle, chickens? Just in case if um, you can't get to, um, you know, if you live on the land or far distance from, you know, uh, do you know how to hunt from the grocery store? You know, the far distance from the grocery store, if you're talking martial law, then these are things that you might need to consider and want to definitely um, consider. Okay? So um, that's um, our show for tonight. Appreciate you all for coming in, tuning in um, with us. Um, we get ready to head up out of here so we can say peace. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit. 